Hello everyone, this is Claudia again with another Scala workshop and I'm gonna tackle today a little bit of the recursion and we're just gonna do the simple. So first of all we're gonna start at what is exactly what does it mean by recursion? Uh, it means you wanna do a calculation on a large set of, of elements and you do that by uh, making calling the same function on that on an ever uh, smaller set of elements so you're always going to call it like you're gonna take the first list then you're gonna go and and call the recursion on the list minus one element and so on and in the end you're gonna do the, the calculation and maybe this will be easier once I'm gonna have an an example but basically um, what you do is you're always putting on the stack this call methods until the last stop until something makes uh, the calculation to stop which by which you're gonna go up the stack again so I'm gonna have a, a list and let's say it has eight elements doesn't matter and I'm gonna want to sum all the elements of this list so I'm making a function that takes a list as an argument and pardon my typos i always do typos doesn't matter as a rule uh, for a recursion function in scala you always have to uh, put the return time otherwise the function the uh, won't compile so what i'm i'm trying to see here is when will this recursion stuff that stop that is the first thing that you need to do so i'm always checking uh, if i have an empty list i'm always returning zero because always a sum starts with zero right zero plus one plus two plus three otherwise i'm summing all with the tail and i forgot here to add the head so you say head plus sum all of tail so you always call the function again the same function with a smaller set of elements which is the tail and you always add the head to the sum so if i'm gonna call the sum all of the list uh, is going to sum all the elements of the list so it will first say oh is the list empty no otherwise say uh, head plus so it will be on the stack one plus sum all of the next the list of from starting from two and so on in the end it will reach an empty list you know and and then it will be zero and then it will go backwards it will be zero plus eight plus seven plus six plus five plus three plus two plus one and it will give us 36. now this is kind of what it looked like the, when i was doing stuff in in java but you can very easily do pattern matching and i think from now on we're just gonna do pattern matching or listing lists because yeah it's easier to understand than now uh, uh, more fun so I'm matching the list so if I have an empty list just like the if there I'm returning zero so that's the stop case and then the case that keeps going if I have a head and a tail you know I will do head plus uh, the sum all of the tail so this is kind of exactly the same as the first function just using pattern matching and it will give me the same result so remember you always have to have a stop case or the case where your algorithm will stop otherwise it will go in infinite loop and then you always have to call again the function this is called a head recursion you know because technically first you you calculate all the recursive functions and then you go up the stack and you actually do the calculation i know that from from this one it it might look like you first do the sum because it says head plus sum but actually what it first does it it does all the sum all it per it traverses the list till the end and then it goes back again and does the sum so for very large lists this will exhaust the stack and you got stack overflow and all kind of other other errors and and i think that's a very nice way to do this uh, this is kind of the yeah the same problem as you have in java and that's why maybe a lot of people didn't really use recursion there 
but it's not really it's it's more of an algorithm problem rather <laughs> than a programming language problem however you can do a tail recursion and a tail recursion you use an accumulator so you always make the calculation first and then do the next recursive call this way you don't really use the stack because there's nothing to stack but you have to change a bit your algorithm so what i'm doing here i'm defining another sum function and inside i'm going to define an inner function called sum me that has two parameters one is the accumulator uh, so yeah, I'm accumulating the sum in a variable, right? The inner variable, and the other one is a list. Um, and what will happen after I make this function is that inside the sum all tree, I'm going to call this sum me with the initial va values of the accumulator and the list. And initial values, you know, you always start a sum with zero, and you always start the big list. And what I'm going to match against is, is the uh, list from the sum me. So in here again, I did some typos, but basically I'm saying, okay, it will end when I'm reaching the end of my list. So when I'm reaching an empty list, because I'm always going to take a smaller list, smaller list until the empty list. And when I reach that end, I'm just returning the accumulator uh, because that will be my result. Otherwise, if I'm having a list that is com uh, composed of a head and a tail, then what do you think will happen now? I think I want to say I'm going to call recursively the same function, but the accumulator now adds the head to it. So I'm making the calculation already, and then I'm calling the sum me with a smaller function. This way, I'm not upping the stack anymore. And now we have to do the first call, and I'm saying sum me of zero, because that is the first value of the accumulator, and the list. So how will this 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 work so I'm calling it with the accumulator 0 uh, and I'm calling some me inside so some me will start with accumulator 0 and the big list I don't have an empty list I have a head of the tail and then I'm gonna say some me of 0 plus the head so the first element that will be 1 and then I'm calling it with the tail so always the accumulator will go like 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on. So kind of the other way that we did with the head recursion in a reverse order. And this will ensure that you don't really get errors like stack overflows and other other things like that. Um, what I'm going to do next is uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of, not a lot, let's say four other functions which I'm gonna do with actually head recursion and maybe your homework for today will be that you do a tail recursion out of them at home or whatever you want so I'm gonna start with the first the easiest one is maximum of a list so I have a list and I want to find what the maximum is and first I'm defining an helper function which is maximum between two numbers and that's a, a function that I'm gonna uh, make use when I'm calculating the maximum of the list because I always need a maximum in between A and B. And then I'm defining the normal function max, which takes a list of its and will return an int. Always remember to put the return type of a recursive function. And I'm matching on the list. Now, what is my stop? Uh, criteria yeah when I have an empty list obviously so if I have an empty list what what will be the maximum of an empty list well actually there is no maximum of an empty list so I'm gonna throw a new exception so if you're trying to do a maximum of an empty list really 
uh, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> you can't do a maximum. But you can have a maximum uh, when you're reaching one element list, right? When you have a one element list, then uh, that element is the maximum, which is correct. And you can have an element and the remainder of the list. And then what will be the maximum between those? It will be a maximum between a head and the max of the remainder of the list. So you're recursively calling the remainder of the list. Uh, this, like I said, this tail head recursion, try to do it with tail recursion and see how that works. And I think the maximum of the list it will be eight or something like that. Okay, now that was an uh, easier example. What I'm thinking of what it would be a nice function to do is to replicate the element. So I'm saying I want to replicate uh, three times the same element. So give me a list of, uh, of element x uh, and a number of times. So I'm going to have a function that says replicate. And first argument is the number of times. The second argument will be the element itself. Now, to construct this list, I'll have to match on the number of times because that will be my recursion, right? I will always have to add to the list until I don't have anything to add. So until number of times, it will reach zero. Um, but not necessarily. <laughs> Let's see. Now, if I have something, if I have an... Uh, I, so if I reach at one point and that one is smaller or uh, equal to zero, then I'm always returning an empty list. And if I have any other case of bigger than zero, I'm always going to return a list that will have the element and then I'm going to do re call replicate with a number of times minus one and the element again. So I'm always calling it with the next number of times. Um, now, why did I put smaller equals than zero first at the condition? Because maybe you want to call it with a uh, uh, negative number. So I want to take that case into account. But basically, this is like the reverse, not the replicate. So I'm replicating uh, three times two. So I'm going to have a list of uh, three elements. All elements have uh, are the same. Now I'm going to have the take. So take, it says take first x elements of a list, which you can do recursively, right? So you have a number of elements that you want to take and you want, you, you'll have the list. Now this is a nice uh, nice example because in here you don't you're thinking what what should I match on? Should I match on a number of elements? Should I match on the list which one exhausts first? Well, actually you can match on both in the same time because you have cases you have stop cases for for both being exhausted. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna make a match between the two of them. So I'm going to make a match between number of elements and the list. And I'm going to say, OK, what is my first stop, stop position? Well, when I'm reaching zero number of elements, and I don't care the, the size of the list at that moment, because then I, I have to just return um, uh, the last, like an empty list or nil at the end, right? then maybe I'm reaching the end of the list, but I don't really care how many elements do I still need to do to take from the list, but I have an empty list. Then I again return an empty list. And then I have a case when I still have to take more and I still have elements in the list. And then what do I do? Well, that's easy. You take the first element again from the list and you concatenate that one with calling recursively the take again with both of the elements 
lesser so take more will take minus one and the list will be the tail of the list so this is a very fine example when you actually have two variables that could influence the stopping of your algorithm um, so I'm taking I don't know two elements of the list and I'm going forward If you're doing this in, in Eclipse, it will make much faster because every time you save it, it will run it. IntelliJ is a bit slow on this. So I see the take of the first two elements is one and two. Okay. And now the last one for today uh, and for this part one is to re uh, how to reverse a list. So I have a list and I want to write the reverse of it. Uh, so this will return again a list and in this one you have to think about how does the stack work you know it kind of works in a reverse order so if I'm matching I always have the stop case right which is if I have an empty list add an empty list at the end so when I'm finished with the list, I'm adding list uh, empty at the end. But then if I have a head and a tail, what should happen? Your first reaction will be maybe concatenate the head with a, with a calling reverse on the tail, but that won't give you a reverse list. What you need to do is first say reverse of the tail and then concatenate with the list made of the head so always you add the head at the end and not in the beginning and this way you get a reverse list and i'm using the triple uh, column here because i'm concatenating two lists and not not concatenating one element with the end of the list so if i'm gonna ask for reverse of the list and i'm gonna run this one you will see what happens. So, uh, as a remembering, the homework here is to make all this function tail recursive, not head recursive, like I did here. So, using an accumulator in this case. Thanks for watching and hope you to see you next time. Bye bye.